Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Hey, welcome back, listeners. I've got a previous guest for you here with me today is Ryan Hurd. He, his episode came out on the 4th of July, 2023, and today we're discussing all things technology that can help our loved ones age in place well, safely, and happily. So thanks for joining me again, Ryan. Hey, Jennifer. Thanks for having me on again. This is great. I love talking yeah. with you. It's always <laughs> fun and entertaining. Well, that's good because nobody wants to listen to a downer, (laughs) boring podcast. (laughs) Well, we're going to make sure that this one is not downer and it's definitely not boring, but we've got a lot of information for you, right? Yep. So as you guys who have listened to the previous episode know, and when I say previous, I'm talking about the one that came out in July. Um, Ryan is part of the um, caregiver. What is your, well, you're the (laughs) losing my thought. Yes, I am. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'll let you tell it because, oh, caregiver smart solutions. There we go. I'm not wearing there my we glasses, go. so I can't read your background. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what the oh, yeah. July 4th episode was about. But today is about all the technologies. So let's let's hear about you in case this is the first episode for some. Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I've spent the last 30 years of my life in smart home, IoT, all that fancy stuff. And I got to tell you, I've had a lot of fun. It's amazing what technology can do. But when we talk about our loved ones, in my case, it was my father, and I needed to know how he was doing. Not only did I need to know how he was doing, I needed to know right at this moment, like, was he okay? Because I don't know about you, but a lot of times when I call dad, uh, he doesn't answer. So what do you do? And that's where I came up with Caregiver Smart Solutions, which is a, a, a technology using tiny non-invasive sensors that are, uh, think of it as a caregiver support system. They are uh, monitoring that person's activities of daily living. And this way, you know, um, is everything okay or is something out of the ordinary? And you get real-time data and you don't necessarily have to rely on cameras, which when yeah. your episode came out, I did put out a video asking people, how many of you, how many caregivers have used cameras in the homes of their loved ones? And a lot of people did have, which is totally fine. And some people couldn't because their loved one was in a care home like my mom. Right. Right. And, you know, so I got some of the, the pros and the cons, which, you know, and somebody's in the mid stages and can still handle a lot of their own daily things. You don't need a camera. So I I love what you guys, what you've created, because I think that's, you know, every, you got stages. It's like, you know, we have baby locks on everything until you teach them to stay out of the cabinets or I have a really quick, Uh, funny story on, on home, home devices. I was photographing a wedding, backyard wedding. And, you know, when you're the photographer, you can't just run to the restroom when it's convenient. You have to go when, when it's. When the time is appropriate, and I got right. into the into the bathroom, and it had one of those toilet latches on it, and I swear to God, I almost wet myself. <laughs> I have I have a daughter, and I never had one of those things, so <laughs> it was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to pee in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I figured out how to get it open before it was too late. But yeah, sometimes yeah. you know we we have to. Technology has to grow with our needs, or. Shrink yeah, and ladies needs. and gentlemen, you've heard it first on <laughs> Fading Memories right here today. <laughs> well, you're right. I mean, there is appropriate and there's not appropriate technology. And when we're talking about, you know, worried about somebody, the first thing we do is we go to the camera. And, you know, it it, it sort of makes sense, uh, especially when we talk about the baby camera. I, I believe I had a baby camera for each one of my kids. You know, you're there. You're you're a, a new parent. You're concerned. You're you're hearing all these horrible things about SIDS and everything else in the world, and you know you just want to know if they're okay. The problem is, is you know I, I wasn't sure if I was getting more stress because I'm staring at this stupid camera all the time, or I'm just exhausted because then I fall asleep and then I wake up in a panic staring at the camera again. <laughs> so, you know. Sometimes it's a good idea. Sometimes it's not. 
either way, there's got to be something better. And that's really where my focus has been over the years is how do we use technology to help us as humans, right? So technology uh, is a tool and the data is really information to help us, you know, whether we're a caregiver or whether we just want a smart home or who knows, you know, whether we have a young child at home or we just want to make sure that they got home after school and everything's good. How do we leverage that technology to work for us finally? Makes sense. So yeah. besides the caregiver smart solutions, you 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 were stacking up some favorite yeah. company stuff there. <laughs> so what other technology options are there for aging in place well or monitoring a loved one both yeah well there's so much so let's start with use case so first as a caregiver the first thing you have to figure out is what's important what do you want to know like what is the most important thing what is the problem that you're having and with that there is a lot of stuff out there now this stuff because it's technology uh, pretty much all of it works on the internet. So your mom, your dad, your grandma, they have to have internet in the home. Right? So that's number one, they have to have internet. Then number two, what's important? And what is that person like? So for example, when we when we look at the, the age groups, uh, each age group will use technology differently. So for example, you know, myself, I am considered a millennial. So for me, having a, a uh, smart door lock makes sense because there's five of us in the household, plus my parents, plus friends. You know, we just went away on vacation, so we needed somebody to come over and feed the endless animals we have in this house that we couldn't take with us. You know, so we give them the code. They're able to come in. They do their thing. Everybody's good. We don't have to use a key. With that said, you know, if we talk about my 96-year-old grandmother, you know, she's part of that greatest generation. For the last, I don't know, 60, 70 plus years, she has come home and she's put a key into the door. That's what she wants to do. That's what she expects. She doesn't want any of the fancy technology. So that's the type of person that you want to, you know, for her own independence and dignity, keep the regular door lock. It's fine. Or if you have to get a smart lock, get one that has a key, right? It, it's all about working within their terms. And then if you go to my youngest son, who is 11, it really is kind of fascinating because here is a child that has grown up in a world that has no buttons, right? His phone, his iPad, even his laptop, everything is touch and swipe, everything. And I think we spoke about this on the last podcast. You know, in my day, when I had to make a phone call, I had to go to the, to the wall because the phone was bolted to a wall and it had a long wire on it. And if you wanted a longer wire because you wanted some you know, privacy, you had to go down to a, a shop called Radio Shack and buy yourself a longer cord. And they would always get all tangled up. But, you know, that's that's the good old days, as we say, right? Yep. My household <laughs> had had two lines because my dad had a business line and then the home line. And we could use the business line occasionally, but not for random f friends or boyfriend phone calls. <laughs> but yeah, and he worked for the phone company. So when they built, they had the house built in 1970, which was the year before my sister was born. Um, there were phone jacks in every room. So pretty sure I don't remember her having a phone, but I did. We're four and a half years apart. So, um, you know, she she was starting high school when I was starting college. So I don't I'm sure she must have had a phone in her room. I know I did for a while. <laughs> right. And now kids today, now kids nowadays have their own phones with their own lines and their own everything. You're right, because back then it was either the party line or after the party line, it was then, okay, the house had a line. And if you were lucky enough, if you could convince your mother, in my case, to get my own line, hey, life was good. I had my own phone number, you know, call me on my phone number. You know, it was interesting. Back in that time, uh, you know, we're talking late 80s. I had a pager. Now, it was only <laughs> drug dealers or, you know, people from Jersey that had pagers. And of course, I grew up in Jersey, but I wasn't a drug dealer. So it's not that. But it's interesting because at that time, you know, there's two things that happen. You always had a cup holder of quarters and you always had like a good 15 minutes. So let's say my mother texts me. Well, text. 
My mother paged me, <laughs> and then I would have 15 minutes to find a pay phone, and I would feed it the quarters. I would call my mother up, and she'd always ask me the same question. When are you going to be home? And I'd always give her the same answer. At some point. <laughs> <laughs> At some point. And it would always be, well, try to be around midnight. Okay. And for the most part, you know, that's what it was. But it's interesting because you were looking for a phone, you were feeding it with quarters, and there was a certain time frame where nowadays somebody texts you and they're like, it's been a minute. Why haven't you texted back? I'm talking to you. It's like, can I just go into the bathroom for some peace and quiet? <laughs> so, exactly. you know, technology can be good and it can be bad, but it's all relative, right? Mm hmm. Well, when you're talking about the home phone, quote unquote. I recently saw a video short, YouTube short, where um, the parent, they, you know, the parent has a smartphone, the teenager has a smartphone, but the young kids, probably early elementary school, they're too young for smartphones. So the household has a smartphone that's left at home, but it, it's a phone the kids can use. And I thought that's, that's pretty smart, but it's also sort of going like, Almost backwards, but not quite. It's like a newfangled twist on what we grew up with. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the other side of that is like the Life 360. So for us, we have Life 360 on all of our phones. And again, it, it, it it's the question of, okay, so when should my kid have a smartphone? Or even mom, because I'll tell you what, just like Caregiver Smart Solutions, my company, is all about support. We are basically like that Life 360 for mom. You know, you just want to know what's going on. And the same thing with our kids. If our kids are going to be away on bikes and I want them, I want them out. I want them active. You know, I want them enjoying the summer. But I also want to know, you know, where are they and if they're coming home. So, again, that's kind of like, how do you make that technology work for us? Now, with that said, since we're talking about like phones and stuff, let me show you this, which is kind of cool. So this is a product by Hands-Free Health. It's called WellB. And basically, think of it as Alexa on steroids. Now, mm. the interesting thing about this is you can have real conversations and it can also stimulate your loved one. And what I mean by that is asking interesting questions and having those conversations more than just um, what's the weather like? What time is it? Can you play my favorite song? Because whether it's a, a game on an iPad or whether it's talking to a device, it's, it's all about keeping our brains going, right? Our memory retention, challenging, all of these things are the things we need as human, as well as a physical side. So this was something that was really interesting that I spoke to the uh, developer of it and the manufacturer. And I got to tell you, I'm really excited on this. This is kind of cool. It does a bunch of things. I'm going to read it to you right now when I get my. <laughs> glasses, your glasses. Because, <laughs> yeah you know so you say hello to it you can see it right here uh, it's reminders for medical appointments uh, recording blood pressure and weight so if you have a doctor that's asking you to uh, take your blood pressure every day instead of writing it down you can just tell it's so much easier uh, prescription medication reminders uh, caregiver notifications um, general knowledge, obviously, uh, news, stocks, updates, weather forecast, music, pet care information. It's so if, again, when we say it's kind of like a, a, a Alexa just on steroids and really tweaked to help the caregiving community. This is something that's really cool. So, again, I would check it out. That's that's something that I've had some fun with lately. Now, it sounds interesting. And I have to laugh because I must be one of the few households. I don't have an Alexa. I don't have a Google Home, although we have so many Google devices that that's probably going to change someday. All someday around soon. the home. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we have apps on the phone, like the air conditioner came on, um, which is fine. But when my husband's not home, I make sure it's at 78. Yeah. My office is freezing. The window's open because it's downstairs. doesn't affect the temperature. But, you know, sometimes <laughs> I'll it'll come on and I'll be like, that feels cold. And so I'll look on my phone. I'm like, yep, now it's set at 74. Nope. <laughs> Turn it up to 78. <laughs> Bring it back down. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. no, that's, 74 is too cold. <laughs> well, and you know what? Just like that and opening up doors and windows, you know, for the smart home, you have the ability to motorize shades and windows and all these cool things. When we adapt that to the home market for our loved ones, you know, if somebody has 
let's say they're in a wheelchair or they're using a walker. There's a great company out there called Autoslide. And what Autoslide does is they, they automate doors. So think of if somebody is using a walker, it's hard enough for them to get around. But then on top of that, let's say they have a dog um, and they want to let that dog outside. And maybe it's a backslider or something. So Autoslide automates that door. So this way, all they have to do is push a button or even they have a little key fob. And when they get close, it's automatically going to open the door and it can open it all the way. Let's say mom wants to get outside and touch some grass or just do, uh, let's say the doggy function. So it opens up 12 inches and it lets Fido out. That's kind of cool because again, as we're getting older, how do we use this technology to help us? And whether it's, let's say the back slider, whether it's the bathroom door, whether it's the front door, especially if you're in a wheelchair, I mean, it's hard enough and what we, what everybody really yearns is, how can I be as independent as possible? And products like Autoslide gives you that ability. So let's say, again, you're coming up to the front door, maybe you're using a ramp and that door is automated. So now if you just have its key fob kind of thing, you just go up to it, boom, opens up the door, you go right through, life is good. It's so much easier. And that that's what gets me excited about technology, how we can adapt kind of the, the new stuff with the old door and make it work for that person. Yeah, I would like something like that because to get out to our deck, we've got doors that swing in, screens that swing out. So if you're trying to get out with the dog, the 75 pound yep. golden retriever who has all eyes on your plate, or if you're trying to walk her and you foolishly put the leash on before you get out the maze of two doors, you know, right. and they're old screens. You'll probably appreciate this. They're almost like beach cabin screens. If you're not careful, they smack against the frame and <laughs> they make that vacation sound, which is kind of cool, but not always. You don't always want the door smacking mm. against the frame. And, you know, it's a challenge. And we have lots of wildlife around here. And my crazy mutt decided one day she was going to chase a deer, which surprised me because on a leash, she's very wary of them. But off leash, she thought that was that was a totally smart thing to do. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not a smart thing to do. Fortunately, it ran away from her and didn't, you know, smash her melon in. Yeah, but yeah, right? just just or you're coming home with groceries. Sheesh, I could think of a lot of reasons. You know, I'm able bodied, and I could think of a lot of reasons why I would want to use the auto slide. That is cool. Okay, so what yeah, else you got for cool. us? All right, so let's talk water. So <laughs> in all households, right, the number yep. one issue is water dehydration whatnot but with that it comes like the number one issue from insurance uh issues happens to be water damage right maybe your hot water heater went um the second floor bathroom had a, a burst pipe whatever it is so there's product out there there's one that's called flow by moen and what it is is it's this intelligent water meter so it's using all this state of art technology ai blah 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 stuff and what happens is it goes on the main water line coming in your house. So you do need a plumber, you need a plumber to install this, but it learns the habits of the water in the house. It literally gets to the point where it knows the difference between, let's say you're sprinkling the brack, uh, the grass, or you have one of those toilets that's kind of running on the second floor that you can't hear. That's just dribbling all the time. It's that amazing. And if it, if it senses something out of the ordinary, like let's say you're watering the, or let's say you're filling the pool. So it's going to ask you a uh, large amount of water going on right now. And you can say, okay, well, I'm, I'm filling the pool, bypass it. If you're on vacation and you're not filling the pool, I want that thing to turn off. The great thing about it is it's going to turn off the main water coming to the house, which is going to minimize whatever that problem is. So if you have a burst pipe, it's going to minimize. So it's not going to be going on for three days straight. That's the kind of things, especially, again, when we're talking about our aging loved ones, maybe mom is down the block. Maybe mom is three states away. You have no idea. And maybe mom's not paying attention because she has a basement. And hey, how many times do we actually go into the basement? So I think that's a great use of, of nowadays technology as well. Yeah, I know somebody has got a 14-month-old house and uh, they came home to water on the floor. The cabinet facing on the island was buckling it eventually came off and oh. the yeah i mean we're talking a like a lot of brand damn. new house yeah. yeah and um it was their pot filler i guess it was not installed properly or something 
But basically, it had been leaking the entire time they'd been in the house, so you wouldn't know that, you know, you couldn't see it until the water eventually got out. But yeah, it's like, I'm just thinking it's like, you know, if we ever get our kitchen redone, not that they're connected, but um, <laughs> we have a toilet that likes to run just often enough that you... Well, you better go catch it. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but I, I used the upstairs guest bath. Came downstairs, did some work, went upstairs to get something to drink. Two and a half hours later, and the toilet was still running. It was like, ah, ah. you know. And being in California, except for this year, it's like drought, 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 you know, no water, no water, no water. And so the toilet running for two and a half hours is like, it made me crazy. <laughs> just <laughs> just from lot. the, you know, environmental issues. And of course, we had so much rain this year that it would still annoy me, but it's like not right. quite as big a worry. <laughs> but it's I don't like, want now we've talked about two forever. things everybody should have in their homes probably yeah I, I i do think something like that i have it in my home i think every home should have it because it just really gives you peace of mind and if and when something happens because we all know it will at least it's going to minimize that issue now well, now, now you tell me about, about this thing a week before we're leaving on a three-week road trip <laughs> and i don't have time to get it installed <laughs> there you go amazon um, it's called flow by moen you're good to go <laughs> Yeah, but then I need the plumber, which, yeah, you know, still waiting on a plumber to work on the pipes in our master bathroom, primary bathroom, excuse me, old term. <laughs> Eventually, we'll get there. Well, since we're walking, we're talking about water and we're talking about bathrooms, uh, let's talk about voice control of the bathroom. Now, I think we had this conversation before. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is, Jennifer. Do you think there's any reason that you would want to talk to your toilet and tell it to flush? Meh, maybe. Meh, yeah. I mean, on its uh, face value, it's like, meh, maybe, maybe not. Well, in my household, where I have three young boys and it's absolutely chaos. So that, <laughs> that vision that just went through everybody's brain is exactly <laughs> how it is in my house. So as I'm walking past the bathroom, I see this wonderful toilet of, well, you know what's in it. The ability to say, Alexa, flush the toilet, eh, it's kind of a nice city, right? I don't have to go in there and whatnot. But when we talk about our aging loved ones, if we talk about my 97-year-old grandmother, you know, she has a hard enough time getting out of the chair, her favorite chair. And when she does sit down, she's really more falling down into that chair. She's really not sitting down. Well, that same thing happens on the toilet. Now, if there was something that we can do to just make it a little bit easier for her, now we're talking about game changing, and that's where this comes in. So the ability to say, Alexa, flush my toilet, gives her the ability not to bend over again, not to try to juggle, not to try to fuss with that toilet, which is a potential fall. Now, let's take that one step further. We've talked about the toilet. They can also do it for your uh, shower for your tub think about it the ability where grandma does not have to like put her hand into the shower turn the shower knobs on you know maybe it's too hot now she goes back and she gets burnt you know she's bending over she might fall if she could just say alexa turn the shower on make it 85 degrees and it just happens and later on alexa turn the shower off again it's the little things that can totally change and retain the independence and dignity of our aging loved ones and i think that's fabulous that makes sense do you know if that works with a hot water heater that has a heat pump on it it should work with anything because the hot water heater once it triggers once it sees uh the call for hot water regardless of it's a tank a all-in-one combi boiler everything is producing at the same rate. So yes, and it goes into the mixing valve. So a lot, again, this one is by Moen, but a lot of their mixing valves are smart. So they know exactly where 70, 80, even 90 degrees is. Because yeah, we have a, a, so it recirculates the hot water, which is so mm -hmm. lovely, is literally you turn on the shower and it's like less than 10 seconds and it's hot, hot. That's I like so hot, nice. hot showers. I, I I would have to figure out how hot it is. I like showers, but I'm pretty sure it's more than 85 degrees. <laughs> and it would be almost nice to do that on the sinks because you turn on the, we've got the, the two handle taps right now. Yep. And you turn on the hot water. I turn on the water, rinse my hands, turn it off, wash, turn it back on. And before you're done rinsing, it's too hot. If you've yeah. only turned on the hot side. So, hmm. 
Mm, okay. More things for the plumber to do if they ever get back here. <laughs> More things. But we're always looking for that technology that can help us. And I mean, these are the kind of things that can help us at all ages, but especially our aging loved ones. Now, since we're in the bathroom, let's talk about the toilet again. <laughs> you know, I, I tend to talk about the kitchen originally because the kitchen, the kitchen was like a, a total gift of technology, you know, from the smart microwave to the smart stove to the smart refrigerator. And I always said it's the next generation is going to be that bathroom because the bathroom is the only place you can be 100% honest. You know, when you get out of that shower, well, you're there in all God's glory. So <laughs> the things that are coming out are going to be fabulous. Everything from floors that'll be able to take your weight. So on a daily basis, they're going to see your weight and they're going to record that for you. Or even mirrors that are going to take pictures of you each and every day. Now, I know, I know it sounds scary. <laughs> I don't want a picture of me like that, you know, God forbid. But think of it like this. Let's say you have a little mole on your face. It could be a sunspot. It could be a mole. It could be nothing. But it's a lot of times as humans, we just don't pay attention to these little changes. But technology can. So if it took a picture every single day for 30 days, and now it tells you, you know, that's getting bigger. It, it was at, you know, one centimeter or one millimeter, and now it's three millimeters. You know, it's going in the wrong direction. So that is something that you want to know. With that said, we talk about the toilet. The <laughs> toilet, the smart toilet of the future, will be analyzing the data coming out of you. <laughs> I know that sounds interesting. But I had a great conversation. Um, Toy Labs. <clears throat> so this is a, it's a manufacturer. It's called True Lou. T-R-U, T-R-U-E-L-O-L. So think of it as like a bidet, but it's really to analyze the data coming out of you. You remove your toilet seat. You put this new toilet seat on top. It kind of looks like a bidet. It does get plugged in. And what's happening is it's, it's monitoring the activities that are coming out of you. So it, it really is fascinating from a technology standpoint. It's looking for anything different. So let's say your urine is, your urine is supposed to be clear, right? I know for myself, you get up in the morning, you, you go and take a pee, and it's usually that yellowish color. And that's, a, that's the first indicator that you're either dehydrated or you're taking too many vitamins. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do is drink you know, uh, uh, a gallon of water, just kidding with a gallon, but you definitely want to drink water. If you see red in that, you know, if there is blood in the urine, that's a problem. And the same thing, whether it's stools, stools loose, stools consistent, all these things. I'm talking to the manufacturer of this, uh, his name is Vic, and it's fascinating. They were able to pick up cancer, pancreatic cancer. They were able to pick up urinary tract infection. Again, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, we really don't pay attention about, but over time, things could be indicators. And then that information can be sent right to your doctor and your doctor can really figure out, oh, something's wrong. I need you to come in. We got to do more tests, all those things. It's really fascinating. And I'm very curious to see where it goes. A lot of um, uh, nursing uh, care centers, SNFs, assisted living facilities have been using this and the, the information coming out of it is fantastic. So I don't know. Would you like your data analyzed that's coming out of you? <laughs> um, not for my personal use, but um, I don't know at what age the uh, medical profession starts sending me those nice, I think it's called a coal guard. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, good. that That's back. I guess I used to do it every couple of years. Now I guess I must be old enough for every year. But, it's you like know. You when you turn 50 and you got that AARP card right in the mail, how do oh, they know your age? Like to the day. I know so many people, me included, that got those solicitations before we turned 50, like within four to six months. It was offensive. Wow. <laughs> they're on it, man. They're, their yeah. marketing team is on we, it. I'll tell that you. is true. But, you know, you said that it could be screened for cancer. So maybe they wouldn't have to be mailing this uh, sample kit back and forth. Because yeah. I, always, I always feel slightly bad for the mail person, even though they're not, <laughs> they're not really dealing with it so much. It's just yeah. the packaging. But still, it's kind of like. You know, and at first my husband's like, ew, I'm not doing this. And he threw it away. And I finally said, would you rather do that or would you rather have a colonoscopy? Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. 
these ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about Neuro Reserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. Well, you know, I mean, I think, especially with something like that, I, we do make fun about it. We talk about it, analyzing the data coming out of you. But I think, you know, especially after COVID, and I think we're a little more of a health conscious society. I mean, for myself, I wear my Garmin watch. I'm a runner. So, you know, knowing what my resting heart rate is, knowing what I'm running at, what my pace is, I, I could definitely see something like this be useful to myself. You know, and I think what it is, is once it's just part of the house, it just becomes part of the everyday thing, just like my watch, just like I use my watch. And, you know, whether it's an Apple watch, whether it's the Trulu, whatever, it's just, it's giving you that information. Because I know for myself, you know, God forbid something was wrong. If you could pick up cancer way before there's an issue, because like your husband, I'm really not a fan of the colonoscopy. It's it's not number one on my list. I'll be no. honest with you. And it's only because of the salty drink that you got to drink for like a day before, you know, not my cup of tea, mm -mm. but I, I would consider this. And, and I'm very curious to see how younger generations, if they'll adopt things like this, if they're going to adopt things like, you know, the mirror where it's telling you all your biometrics, the, the mat that you're standing on, because it's kind of like an Apple watch where you can stand on it. It could actually take your heart rate. It could take your your temperature, it could take your weight, like all of these data points every single day. I think that'd be kind of interesting, but I'm curious to see the adoption on it. I, I would assume that as the generations age, so I'm a Gen Xer, you okay. know, as we get into, you know, as my generation is the older generation and you guys are where I'm at, I think there'll be more adoption because right. one, we have a absolute lacking of medical professionals and so the more information we can give them when we finally get an appointment right. the better it would be for everybody because they're not having to guess like you know just having a warning with older adults and utis and like sometimes you have no clue other than maybe your personality kind of takes a change for the worse or yeah. you know you sleep more but maybe you know you're just bored or you know there's a lot of I think there's a lot of benefits to it. And like you said, once it's there, you know, it's not like you're getting a printout from your toilet. No, right. your... <laughs> Although that would be really cool. Like if, if you like Home Depot, right, you scan the stuff and you got to go down, you got to print out. That'd be kind of cool if they could have the toilet and like every day you get up, it has like this little printout. You just kind of pick up kind of like toilet paper and be like, ah, I'm good. <laughs> Who knows? I think the younger generation would just prefer it being beamed into their app. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Well, you know, when we talk about water, another thing that's a, I think is a good technology is, you know, when you go away on vacation, uh, if you stay in a hotel or you go to Disney, everything is automated, right? You put your hands under the sink and the water comes on. You put your hands under the soap. The soap comes down. Those kind of things are really starting to come in our home again. Uh, there's a bunch of manufacturers that do it, and there's a bunch of ways that they do it. Everything from like a foot pad where you can touch to actual touching the unit itself, waving your hand in front of it. I, I think that's another thing that's going to become the norm in the kitchens and in the bathrooms. Because again, 
in the kitchen, you know, if, if I'm preparing food and I've got, you know, chicken guts on my hand, I, I want to be able to wash them off real quick. And I don't want to touch anything because of salmonella. And the same thing with our aging loved ones and, and even really anybody just to make life a little bit easier. And the price is coming down, which is exciting. So you're going to have helps. to put that in your new kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, you were talking about the smart microwave and the smart stove and all that stuff. Uh -huh. like, Man, I got a really dumb kitchen because I've got everything from 1988, <laughs> except for the microwave. Uh, but it's just a cheap, basic one that the home previous homeowner left. And I refuse to let my husband buy the $400 Breville microwave because... <laughs> It does almost all the same things our Breville Smart Air Oven does. So, I, yeah, you know, but yeah, if and when he finally gets the enough banks robbed or sells enough houses <laughs> that we could get that done, um, I, I it'll be surprising to see how much Bluetooth he adds to the to the kitchen just because that's his thing. We bought a air filter for upstairs because we have a wood burning stove, okay. which right. not not great environmentally, I know, but it's better than freezing and. We spend extra 30 bucks for the Bluetooth part, which mm. <laughs> he loves. I could care hey, less. You got to have it. You got to have it. Well, it helped the day I was like, that thing doesn't need to run all night. And it has a light just enough to like light up the dark family room. And, you know, I'm yep. like, I'm like that light is keeping me awake. <laughs> and he's like, OK, got to do something about it. <laughs> yep. We turned on the timer. The thing goes off at 10 o'clock. Like well, you hear beep and click and it goes off. Oh, that's great. Just enough to wake you up. No, well, that's you know, like when you're sitting on the couch like, oh, must be bedtime. The uh, the air air purifier went off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you were just talking about stoves. So one of the other exciting things is shut offs for stoves. So there is a company uh, that, that I, I have their brochure here. It's called iGuard. Right? I don't know if you can see that mm -hmm. iGuard. But what they are is they're a, a stove shut off and they came from interesting enough, uh, colleges and college campuses, as well as other housing. So one of the issues was, is, you know, fires on college campuses. So what this does is it plugs basically between your stove and your outlet. And think of it as if you're standing in front of your stove, it allows you to use the stove. But if you walk away and you're not in front of it, it's going to turn off in 10 minutes. So it really limits the amount of, of, issues that you possibly can uh, have. Now, with that said, um, if you're the Italian grandmother and you want to cook that sauce all day long, you can, because you can kind of override and say, okay, allow it to simmer for two hours. Again, this is some simple technology that uh, their next generation is coming out in the next couple of months. So I'm very excited about it because it's smaller. It's going to have that Bluetooth conductivity. <laughs> it's going to have an app. But it gives you the ability to know that everything's okay, especially if you have mom that still wants to cook and everything, but you're really concerned. Maybe she, you know, left the stove on before and she walked out the front door. Maybe she forgot about it. Here's something that might be a little bit of an inconvenience, but it's going to shut that stove off. So this way, you know, she's just got to kind of be in the proximity of the kitchen. But hey, it's going to save lives and it's going to make it a little bit better. Well, we could have used that because we left our the rental that we had before we moved up here. Right. My son-in-law had a birthday party for my 30th birthday party for my daughter at our house. So there was people in the house. Nobody noticed that my husband left the gas burner on. I mean, it was on like super, super uh, low. So the flame was like maybe a quarter of an inch. Right, right. And I right. came home and walked past the stove and went, holy bleep, this has been on all freaky weekend. <laughs> So definitely not uh, cost effective to let your stove run all weekend. <laughs> yeah, but could definitely, I mean, thank God nothing happened. But could you imagine if, you know, uh, something like potatoes, right? Potatoes are notorious. All of a sudden they start bubbling up. They start going over or it could be sauce or God forbid anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we've got to, we've got to make this stuff work for us. But since we're in the kitchen and okay. you actually said something about a microwave, you know, that next generation of smart microwaves is actually kind of cool because, you know, before I had to put these on, yeah. you know, to read. Now, I don't know about you, but you get the package of the, the frozen peas or frozen corn and you look on the back of it. It's like, OK, what do I got to do here? And I swear it is printed in like point one font. I yep. can't see it with the best cheaters that I have in stock. I cannot see this. Well. 
the new smart uh, microwave, you can scan the barcode on it. It knows exactly what it is. It knows exactly what it has to do. You know, all of those fancy things, you got to put it in for three minutes, turn it around. It's got to be 50% for another two, high blast for two and a half, like all that stuff. It automatically does it. So now all grandma has to do is scan it, chuck it in the microwave, close the door, press start, and you're done. Okay, I don't I know about you, but for me, exactly. <laughs> That's a godsend just for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Our our microwave is up a little bit high, and I'm the same way. It's like it, it's it's a real basic like Panasonic yeah, microwave. Yeah. And I've never really figured out the power. I mean, I could do it, but it requires thinking. And when I'm hungry, I don't want to think. I just want to eat. <laughs> exactly. I don't want to <laughs> so, think. I just want to so eat. I, I will make sure that the next microwave, besides it's going to be one of those drawer ones. Um, right. Because I'm only five foot two, and if it's up high, it's kind of a hazard because I could pour hot stuff on myself. Um, I'm going to make sure that it's a smart one. I think we actually talked about that. I'm trying to talk the husband out of a gas stove and into induction. Induction is cool, I got to tell you. I mean, with the new, I, I, I see him every year at Design and Construction Week because I do a lot of lectures and presentations uh, in, whether it's in Orlando or Vegas. But the induction cooktops, I really love because not only is it that technology of the induction, so this way when you take the pot off, it's not hot, right? That's great. But also how they're combining all of these things into it. So the induction is connected to an app. The app is connected to, let's say, recipes. And it'll literally follow all that. Just like that smart microwave, the next generation induction cookers well, literally, if you got to put sauce on and do a couple of steps, it'll literally follow all that step. So if it's got to be like on high simmer, low simmer, boil, whatever that is, it'll literally follow that. And you just say, okay, I'm done with this part. And then it brings it down to a low simmer. I mean, that is so cool. It really is. Hey, that would eliminate arguing over what level, you know, what it says, medium high or medium low. I put it on like four yeah. and he's like, no, it's more like two and a half. I was like, there's always this debate and it drives me bananas because we're both good cooks. So it's like, it's, it's subjective, but that, that, would, that would eliminate arguments in an app that might convince him. I don't see any apps yeah. for gas stoves. No, but the induction and then now they have the everything stove. Like I've seen it last year. I, I, they creamed everything in this stove. Granted, it's 10 or 15 grand, but it's got induction. It's got regular gas. It's got souve. It's got convection. I mean, you name it. This thing has it. It is beautiful. I just want to play around with it. That's all I want. But okay, well, I remember, that, that price tag is cheaper than the price tag on the um, Thermador 60-inch range that he's planning on getting for our kitchen. Yeah, nice 60 inch range. It's like the back of the good old days, you know, having multiple eight inch uh, saucier pans and cooking. Oh, that was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had finally talked him out of the fact that we don't need a, a range that big because it's just the two of us. And right now, one dog, and we don't cook for her, although she does get a lot of snacks. Um, but <laughs> the wall that it's going to go on is 11 feet. So the 48 inch mm. range would look stupid, it would look small. So. Yeah, you got to go 60. Matter of fact, there's another manufacturer called Cooksey. So Cooksey is like this, this product, this technology, and it looks at what you're cooking and it's connected to an app with also connected to like all of your, your um, different um, things and, and what do I want to say, all of your ingredients and stuff like that. But it literally, it watches you and it teaches you the professional way of cooking. And it's so cool because they had this thing. They also had it up on a TV so it could show it sees what's hot, what's cold. It can tell you if you're burning something. It can, I mean, it really is so cool. All of these things that are coming out, it's interesting. Well, I guess maybe I should be thankful the Federal Reserve screwed up our plan for a home equity line of credit after we bought the house to redo the kitchen. Um, obviously, we got the house at the low interest rate. Now they're not low. So that screwed up that whole plan. And, yeah, you know, I know what you mean. So maybe the technology will morph enough to where he'll he'll be more accepting. There's you know, always good stuff coming out. <laughs> maybe I should take him to one of these design shows. That sounds kind of fun. I'll tell you what, you know, if you're into <laughs> housing and, and kitchens and baths, you have to go to Design and Construction Week. 
Um, this year, it is out in Las Vegas again, and it has everything, everything from helm builder stuff to design stuff to kitchens to baths, you name it, technology, non-technology. It really has a lot of cool stuff. It really does. Now, let me write, leave you. We could write that off because he's a real estate broker. There you go. You need to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> so I got two more things for you. Okie dokie. So if your loved one has uh, trim, tremors, they have a hard time holding something. A lot of times what we'll see is that person will stop, let's say, eating well. They'll, they'll end up just eating like deli meats and stuff like that because they can't keep you know, peas on the spoon, or you definitely can't drink uh, or, or eat uh, soup or anything like that. Well, there's a company called Lifeware. It came out with this. It's called a steady, autonomically, it automatically stabilizes the attached utensil. So it's your, you put your spoon in and it's like this gyroscopic thing. And no matter how much your hand moves, you can actually start eating peas and corn and soup again. They have another variation of it. So if you can't hold your hand straight and it's like this, the spoon is actually bent and it does the exact same thing. It is really cool technology. And, and actually last year, L'Oreal um, partnered with this company to adapt that product to give you the ability to put on makeup, lipstick, stuff like this. Because if you have that problem, it's really hard to put on lipstick or any kind of makeup. So having this, this, gyroscopically controlled utensil gives you the ability. And again, it all goes back to what we were saying before, independence and dignity. And everybody just wants to feel as normal as they possibly can. Whether you have tremors, whether you're in a wheelchair or walker, it doesn't matter. That's what this is all about. Yes. And it's past time for a lot of this stuff because, you know, you've got younger people in wheelchairs and people with yeah. other issues that might cause tremors that, and they're not older adults yet. So, you know, I'm sure the, yeah. the, mar the marginalized community of people with these issues are probably cheering that this is all finally coming around. Right. Right. Well, I got one last thing for you. And my one last thing, I mean, you're not going to, you're going to say this isn't technology, but I'm going to argue with you because I'm going to say, yes, this is what technology does. So I don't know if you've ever heard of it, this is called Tausi, and I, I am so sorry because I know I keep on pronouncing it the wrong way, but this is one of my favorites. And the reason why it's one of my favorites is because it is the best pillow you've ever had in your life, okay? It really is. It stabilizes your head. And again, because we talk about technology and technology comes in a bunch of different forms. We think technology has electronics and all that. But it also comes in a goods like this. It's the technology of designing this, of creating it, and solving that problem. And the problem really is, is the ability of holding your head up, whether it's in a pillow like this, or you can take that main pillow portion out, and it really kind of cradles your head. Now, whether mom or dad is having an issue, it could be in their favorite chair. It could be outside. The ability to give them the 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 outside time by the pool, by the grandkids, you know, again, this is all about independence and dignity. So even though it doesn't really look like technology, it really is because of all that design and technology that went into this to design the perfect pillow for your loved one. What do you think? Kind of cool? Yeah. I have a friend who is always on the search for the perfect pillow. He's actually stopping by. Um, they just had a second, well, their daughter-in-law had a second grandbaby. So they're meeting us at Glacier National Park. We are driving awesome. there. So we get to do things like bring the bear spray. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> can't, ta can't take that on the airplane. Um, right. They've got a trailer that they've rented that will be set up in the campground when they get there. And it's got almost everything you need, but, you know, like condiments and stuff. Well, you don't want to buy all that stuff. So they're just going to He's bringing me over an ice chest full of things that they don't need yep. visiting the grandbaby, but they're going to need on the camping trip. And um, I'm going to tell him about Towsie because he's always looking for a better pillow. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the way to go. And it, it's good for anybody. It's good for by the pool. It's good for on the plane. It really is. And you, you don't think of things like this, but when your neck starts hurting or you can't hold up your head as much as you used to, I'm telling you, 
These are the little things that make me excited. Well, it just aids quality of life. Yeah, that's you exactly know, like, what it is. We we got stairs, and if, God forbid I ever need a stair lift because the stairs aren't that wide. And I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure a stair lift and a body walking down is going to fit. But <laughs> I I try to stay physically healthy so that I don't have to worry about those things. We do the best we can, right, with what we've got. That is true. Well, this has been fantastic. Um, I'm going to list all those things in the show notes for you guys, which means I'm going to have to go back through the whole thing and, and re-listen, <laughs> which I don't always do fully. So this has been fantastic. I really appreciate you sharing all of this with me. Um, I don't think I don't think any of it I was aware of. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And I'll tell you what, every year I go out to CES as well as Design and Construction Week. And I always come back with best of breed, the new stuff that's out, the things that excite me. And I'd love to come back and talk to you in like January, February about that. Sounds great. So when is the design show in Vegas? Yeah, so CES is usually the second week in January. And then design and construction week this year is the beginning of February. Okay. So. Yeah. I, I got time to plan for that one. You got and time to plan. And I hope to see you out there because it's so much fun. And my husband's never been to Vegas. Really? Well, we got to take him out. <laughs> and I keep saying, like, I don't know why I'd want to go. I'm not a gambler. I'm like, dude, there's a lot more in Vegas than that. Yeah, neither am I, but, you know, it's still fun. <laughs> you got to throw the quarter or whatever dollar in the slot. I haven't been to Vegas since the early aughts, so I'm overdue. But, you know, you throw a quarter in the slot so you can get back on the airplane and go home. <laughs> that's, I did that's my, my thing. I've donated. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> But now I'm like, I think he'd love that. I'm going to totally tell him about that. So maybe we'll have a little February trip. Vegas is not that far. It's like 90 minutes. At, I don't even think it's 90 minute air, airplane ride from here. Easy peasy. Yeah. Something you got to do. And Vegas in the in the February might be a tad warmer than Northern California. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> it's definitely warmer than Jersey. That it is. That's why I go every single year. <laughs> I don't blame you. Well, this has been great. I hope you guys, um, if you haven't heard Ryan's previous episode all about Caregiver Smart Solutions, definitely need to learn, tune into that one and definitely check out all these tools because aging well is one of the things I'm passionate about because, as I said, I plan on living to be 103 at least. So that is 46 more years to go and then some at, at the time of recording. So <laughs> thank you so much, Ryan. <laughs> you are so welcome. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.